นะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะกะหะปะนาวเสเนติติกามิสุวิจติอัปปัสสาดาดุขากามาอิทิวิญญาญปันดิโตอภิดิเบสุกาเมสุรติงโสนาธิกัจจติตันหักขยรโตโหติสัมมาสัมบุทธะสาวโก First of all may I pay homage to the Buddha to the Dhamma and to the Sangha may I respect the elders the teachers and the r u a n s a r a n a i to all listeners And the lay devotees. Today, Dharma talk is about the uh, Yoniso Manasikara, or wise thinking. You know, in order to gain the right understanding or the right view, there are two two f o r t One is parato k o s e Parato means from others. k o s e means uh, sound. That means the sound of others. If we normally translate, also we can say the teachings of others. When we listening to others, we get information to others. That is called the p a r a t o g o s e but here the sound means the good sound, the wonderful sound, or the dharma sound of others. Like this is the ex- external factors. When we learn from someone, especially the Buddha and also the Buddha disciples, the teachers. The parents and the good friends, good brothers, those are called k a l a y a n a m i t t a good friends. Even the uh, information that we get from social media, or from from the books, and also from the uh, Facebook and so on, if that is the good information, that is also we we include in here. In p a r a t o k o s e this is the first factor which help us, which leads us to obtain the right understanding. The second factor is, as I said, is the uh, yoniso manasikara. Yoniso means wisely, intelligently, carefully. Manasi means in the mind, and kara means making something. Here, if we combine together, then it means uh, making something in the mind carefully, wisely, and intelligently. This uh, yoniso manasikara is the internal factors which help us to gain the right understandings. When we think about something, then we have to think rightly according to the. Uh, the way according to the method, and we think systematically. We think according to the cause and effect, or we think to cause the wholesome arise, wholesome quality arise. These kinds of thinking are called yoniso manasikara. In t i b e t a k a or in the Buddha teachings, there are many uh, kinds of yoniso manasikara. That the Buddha preach, but today we will uh, pick one, choose one of them. Before that, Yoniso Manasikara is praised by the Buddha in many ways. I will give some examples. The Buddha said, "Just as the dawn is the sign of the rising of the sun, so also." The yoniso manasikara or wise reflection 
wise attention is the sign of the Eightfold Noble Path. And in another place, the Buddha say, uh, monks, the body subsists on or depend on uh, the f nutriment of food. It cannot survive or it cannot sustain without the food. So also the uh, nivarana or hindrances, five hindrances, sense of pressure, angers, and so on. They also have the nutriment. What are the nutrients? It is the ayoniso manasikara, which means unwise attention, unwise reflections. And the Buddha also said the opposite side. The Buddha said uh, the body uh, also subs subsists on or sustain on the nutrients. So also the eight factors of enlightenment or bojangha, or seven factors of enlightenment or bojangha. They also subsist on the nutrient. What is the is what are their nutrients? It is yoniso uh, manasikara, wise attention, wise attention. And the other place, the Buddha says, um, the cankers, the cankers are sabas, the factors, samyojanas, and also kilesa defilements. These kinds of uh, unwholesome qualities arise because of ayoniso manasikara, or we can say uh, unwise attention unwise reflection and in the opposite way all the good qualities like uh, the like the you know wholesome minds kusala dhamma and so on this quality arise also because of yoniso manasikara that mean wise attention so this kinds of uh, teachings are found everywhere in the Dipitakas. It shows that the Yoniso Manasikara is very important because this is the, both the uh, good friend, Kalayana Mita and Parato Kose, the self form others, and also the Yoniso Manasikara are the beginning factors to the uh, to develop the affordable part. That's why they are very important. So now we come to one of the uh, wise attention or yoniso manasikara. One way of thinking is, um, the first one is thinking about the gratification, asada, thinking about danger or fault is called Adinawa, thinking about the way to escape that is called Nisarana. This is one way of thinking, that means thinking, uh, thinking about something, we have to think truly through this way. One is thinking uh, about the grat gratification or the good side of it, and the second one is thinking about the bad side or the danger of it. And the last one is thinking how to escape of it if it is unwholesome. So there is one group of teaching the Buddha preached uh, before the Four Noble Truths. That is Anupupikatha. There are five gradually uh, teachings in there. One is Dhanakatha. This course about the uh, offering about the donations, the Buddha will preach how is the benef beneficial of the offering, how do we offer to get the uh, much more merit, and so on. How many ways of uh, offering, and so on. So this is called the uh, Dana Katha. And other one is Sila Katha, that means the discourse on the virtues, good conduct, the bodily and the body action 
uh, good action. So how we behave toward the people, toward the family, toward the societies is included in the sila. So the Buddha will preach uh, because of this sila and because of the dana, or we can say because of the offering, or uh, because of the virtues, when we really were born in the uh, heaven. Heaven is the third discourse in this group. It's called Sakkakatha. So the Buddha will say in the heaven there are various of pressures, a lot of divine food, divine names, and so on. But they are impermanent because over there is full of sensual pressures. And not only that, even the human beings or the below that also, we include in the sensual planes, sensual realms. So this kinds of pressure which arise from, you, you know, uh, from even dana or from the polities or from other things, this pressure are, are impermanent. But there are a lot of the fort or Adinawa. There are a lot of danger in it. In Dukkantopama Sutta, the Buddha preaches in many ways to show that the sensual pressure gives uh, a lot of sufferings more than the happiness. And I preach one verse at the beginning. Nakahapana vasena and so on. It means even the even the uh, pressures or the sensual pressures are like a co are like a coin. But we are not enough, cannot satisfy us. They are um, keep us more sufferings than the uh, sense of pressures. Having known thus, having understand like that, the disciples of the Buddha should not delight or should not cling on it, even the sense of pressure in the heaven. So we have to destroy the cravings of those things. This is what the Buddha say. In, in those two words I have preached at the beginning. So now we come to see the, the fault of the sensual pressures. The Buddha said, such as the jobs, like farming, trading, accounting, when the farmers or the traders, you know, they do the jobs, they do the works, they have, to, they have to face a lot of difficulties, such as they have to bear the heat of the sun, they have to bear the cool, they have to uh, face the, the poison, snakes, and great fires, and so on. They have to undergo a lot of suffering to obtain the sensual pressure or sensual objects. If they did not get what they want, if they don't get the sensual pressure out of that effort, then they are sad, they are sorrow, they are repent, repent, and so on. So this also happened also because of sensual pressures. And the third one, even though we get the sensual pressures, we are satisfied with it, but still, we have to protect it from whom? From the kings, from the government, from the thieves, from the fires, from the flood, and so on. So protecting the sensual object or sensual desire also are uh, difficult. This also happened because of the, the sensual pressure, the Buddha says. And you know, the kings quarrel with the kings. The government, quarreling the government. The mother, quarrel with the father. The son, 
quarrel with the daughters, the brother quarrel with the sisters. All these kinds of quarrels are also arise from the sensual pressures. And out of sensual pressures, the king also, you know, doing a war with the kings. Like nowadays, we see, there is a war. And that also because of sensual pressure, craving for the other lands and so on. And sometimes usually because of anger. But here, here the Buddha says it's also because of uh, sensual pressures. Due to these sensual pressures, then, you know, the people are kill each other, strike each other, stealing from each other, and so on. And more than that, also because of sensual pressures, because, and then we doing bad things, and then we born in the hopeful realms. So this, these are various kinds of suffering we have to undergo because of the sensual pressures. In the Arakatupama Sutta and in the Bodhariya Sutta, the Buddha gives some similes on the fault or the, the dangers of the sensual pressures. The Buddha says, just, just as a hungry and thirsty dog, uh, he, he goes to near the butcher's shop. And out of pity, the butcher give him the meatless bone and give him. So that dog, he licks that meatless bone the whole day and whole night. But he could not satisfy. He could, he could not uh, how say, suppress his anger, uh, his hungry and his thirsty out of that. All he eat is his saliva. So, also the sense of pressures, the more we get, the more we want. How much more we get, the more craving uh, increases. If we don't have like, mindfulness, if we don't have the santuti, that means contentment. The Buddha said there are three things that we cannot, we are, we cannot satisfy. One is the sexual intercourse. The second one is alcohol, and the third one is sleeping. These are all included in the sensual pressures. The sensual pressure gives us some happiness, like when we contact some beautiful forms, and we hear some beautiful, uh, wonderful sounds, we touch the uh, smooth things, and so on. Then we get some pressures. But there are more, more danger are on it. The second simile the Buddha keep is just as the eagles, just as the hawk, or just as you know the heron. When this kind of bird they get they get a piece of meat, they fly into the skies. Then the other you know the other eagles or the hawks see them or see it, then they will try to come and try to pick the head, the, the wings, and so on. If that hawk or eagle does not release the piece of meat, then he's going to uh, got the head damage or even death out of that. So also sensor pressures. Because of many people want it, so they have to fight with it. They have to snatch uh, with it, they have to steal it from others. Like that, sense of pressure also. This the Buddha gives. Or sometimes the Buddha gives uh, the simile like the sense of pressure is like a dream. How? When sometimes, you know, I think everyone who is Putuchana, usually we have some good dreams, you know. Like we, we have wonderful dreams, we are rich and we are, are very happy in some places, wonderful places. And, you know, we got other wonderful things in the dream. But when we wake up, then nothing is there. Sense of pressure also, you know, we get it, but 
it's just temporary, then we have to return them to the nature or uh, to the to where it forms. So these are the dangers of the sensor pressures. The Buddha gave a lot of similes, but we will not preach all here. These are the dangers of the uh, sensor pressures. Now we come to the how to escape the sensor pressures. One thing is someone have to you know see those the bad side and the good side of it. After that, we can compare it. It gives us uh, the uh, pressure as well as it gives us the uh, disadvantage or the dangers, the unsatisfactions. So we have to choose. After seeing clearly, then we, we can decide that the sensor pressures uh, give us more sufferings and also we have to dedicate the cause of it, that is tanha or cravings. In the Samanya Sutta, the Buddha also explained the fruitful of the uh, nekama or renunciations, which is the fifth discourse uh, in the Anupu Pikatha, the gradual saying or gradual discourse. The Buddha is asked by the King Ajasatatu that what is the fruit of the recluse? The Buddha gives the examples like, you know, such as the slaves, the workers of the kings. When he, he sees that the uh, ordination is much more better than being a slave, then she renounce the uh, sleep and become a monk. And out of that, out of that they close. Even the kings have to pay respect. Even the king have to support the food, the ropes, the medicine, and so on. So this is the, the immediately the sound that can see it. The Buddha said, to the king Ajatasattu. And there are various kinds of results when we uh, renounce the sensual pressures, such as by renouncing, in order to get the absorptions, we have to renounce the sensual pressures. Without renouncing sensual pressure, it is impossible to get the absorption jhana then the Buddha will explain further the second jhana, the third jhana, the fourth jhana, and even arupa jhana, or even divide eyes, divide ears, and also the uh, recording the past, and even the destroying the cankers, or the destroying the defilements, are also the result of, of the uh, renouncing sense of pressure at the beginning. So, when we see that uh, sense of pressure is, uh, itself has the fault. It itself is the fault because it's impermanent. And the beings also cannot satisfy when he possesses. Get it, the more he would like to have it. And then that person, the beings that contact with the society, I mean the, the uh, being who is indulged in the sense of pressure, when he, you know, contact with the society, see. Now there are a lot of news that show that, you know, like the fathers uh, rap the daughters and the even the son grabbed the mothers and then they, uh, they steal from each other and so on. There are various kinds of new which show us because of sensor pressures. So this is the one way of thinking is we have to think about the 
uh, gratification or the good side or the pressures out of that things. And the second one, we have to think about the unsatisfaction and all the fault, all the, the dangers of that thing. And the last one is we have to think about how to escape from it. We can use this kinds of thinking in our daily lives, such as the alcohol or the, the beer or, you know, the smoking like that. Then we can see, we can reflect on it. What is the uh, gratification? It, is, we, it gives us some pressures. It gives us some, some kinds of, you know, arousing, energizing, you know, recite, uh, exciting and so on. So this is the uh, good side of it we can say. But the best side is a lot. There are a lot of diseases out of that. Or sometimes, you can, sometimes you can die out of that. And by seeing that, we can compare what should we do. That means we should stop it. We should avoid it. We should avoid it. So by using this method, this kind of thinking, then we can get the right understanding what should we do with those kinds of things. So this is the first way or the first kinds of thinking, Yoniso Manasikara. We can find this, this kinds of thinking in many places in Tibetaka, in many places. In, there are many various sources you can find in the Tibetaka. If you are interested, then you can find the Buddha view explain about these three factors of this thinking, like even in the Khanda, the Buddha say, what is the uh, gratification uh, of the form of Rupa? What is the danger of it? And how to escape on it, the Buddha explained that. So you can, if you are interesting, if you are interested, then you can look it further. So this is the first way of the Yoniso Manasikara. To be summarized, this first way is, one is gratification, asada. The second one is uh, dangers or the fault out of that, or the bad side out of it. That is the Adinawa. And the last one is the way how to escape it. That is Nisarana. So the other ways of the Yoniso Manasikara or wise attentions, we will preach in other in another Dhamma talks. So by the end of this Dhamma talk, I hope you will get some knowledge out of it, and you can apply this kinds of thinking, this kinds of method in your life. Like when you buy something, you can reflect: it is good, it is useful, or not. Uh, and you can think of other things. Uh, if we have it, it's going to be dangerous. We're going to have some financial problems. And then when you decide, sometimes you can buy it. It's useful. But if it's not useful, then you can just stop there, Nisalana, escape from it. So this way is very useful. I hope that you will get benefit of it. So finally, I wish everyone, all the teachers, all the listeners, all the lay devotees, uh, be happy and be healthy, as well as attaining Nibbana as soon as possible. Teruvan Saranayi. <laughs>